Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster Perfect Stats Guide. So, we are uh, pretty deep in Ozer's Mansion still, and uh, we're about to take on the Chatternook painting, I guess. Um, pretty, pretty interesting fight, actually. Uh, a little bit, well, maybe a little bit tougher than uh, some of the bosses that we've fought before, in that... It, uh, it'll swap between the demon version of the painting and the Esper uh, version. And uh, the interesting part is, like, if the... Basically, any of the damage that you do to the Esper part, I think, is pointless because it can revive itself. Uh, and, uh, and actually, I mean, it's, it's actually a really bad idea to attack the, the Esper version of the painting as well. Uh, just because it can, it can respond with Entice, I believe it is. Let me just, uh, let me just confirm that. Let's see here. Alright, so the demon version is weak against fire and holy. That's easy enough. Uh, absorbs lightning. And it uses... Oh, yeah, okay. So it uses a lot of thunder attacks and flash rain. Uh, we definitely want to equip uh, thunder shields. Uh, equipping the saucer helmet probably would have been a good idea as well to absorb the the water aspect of um, of flash rain. Let me just check here. Flash rain uh, deals ice water dual element damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let's see here. The thunder shield will reduce the water the ice damage by half. But won't do anything for us for the water damage. Yeah, that we need the or the saucer would have been the better helmets to be equipping for this. Um, yeah, I wish I would have done that in hindsight here, but um, you know that's how it goes. Uh, but yeah, again, he, he's gonna be slinging a lot of thunder spells at us though, so the thunder shields really are a must. Uh, let me just see here if I can. Yeah, it'll use Entice on us. If killed. Yeah, if you kill it, uh, if you kill the Esper version, it just revives itself. <laughs> and then if you attack it with anything, it uses Poltergeist. I don't know what, what's Poltergeist. Uh, HP leak. Unblockable effect. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so like a sap type. Like a poison, kind of. Okay, well, uh, yeah. You know, I don't know. Not the not the worst thing ever. I think we could deal with a, a little bit of sap damage. But, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, pr again, I don't know. I think it's a pretty interesting fight, at least. it. This Now this reminds me, too, of uh, the last last time I played Final Fantasy XIV. I, I did the... I mean, this is already... It's already quite... Wow, oh gosh, it's been years now. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, the last time I played the the like the current raid tier was the, the Final Fantasy VI raids, I guess. Um, you know, and so Chatternook was the was the second of the of the raids. The, the first one was like the Phantom Train, you know, and then it was uh, Chatternook, and then uh, Guardian was the third one, and then I think Kefka was the the final and the fourth fight, but. Uh, the the Chatternook one was was kind of fun. I don't know. It wasn't my favorite one. My my, fight, my favorite was Guardian, but boy, it, this this fight now, you know, of course, is uh, bringing me back, bringing me back to my fourteen raid days. But good times. Um, there's Entice again. That is uh, that is why you uh, or we don't want to be seeing the the Esper uh, version of the painting. Yeah, well, I don't know. Not much we can do about that, actually. Huh. Yeah, uh, one thing to deal with uh, Entice, though, is to just uh, turn your turn your characters, just use Break and, uh, you know, petrify your, your character, and then use Asuna. And that'll, uh, 
that'll basically reset that because you know break break basically treats it as though you've you've killed your own character. I guess you know literally killing them will work as well, but that's a little drastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Honestly, I'll, I'll be honest. actually now that I'm watching this again, this is actually a little uh, annoying. <laughs> the con you know constantly switching back and forth between the between the two, but whatever. In here, oh, there uh, Edgar blocked and Tice or evaded, I should say. I like to see that. And, uh, all right, so, you know, the usual double cast, uh, fire, and then mimic with go. Wow, that was actually, yeah, that was pretty quick. Okay, not bad. And I'm still just using the my lowly fire uh, spell. I tried to, uh, kind of in a way nerf myself down a little bit and not use, you know, like fire three or ultima. I think, <laughs> I think the first time I... Yeah, my first set of videos uh, for the Pixel Remaster, I think I had Ultima almost the entire game because of the uh, the Esper glitch. And so anytime I, I you know saw myself casting Ultima, I was like, oh, well, that's kind of lame. You know, it's a it's a really OP spell. And so I don't know, it felt a little bit bad when I would when I would use that. So this time I kind of did the I did the opposite and kind of went with you know some weaker spells instead. And I don't know, I think it's uh, yeah, it, it, I think it still works. But uh, all right, yeah. So Ozer just you know is uh, explaining that you know, he acquired the the Lakshmi uh, Esper from I think did he say the the auction hall or auction house? And uh, yeah, he was uh, inspired or yeah, I guess inspired to uh, to commission a painting. And uh, the painting looks really good. Realm's doing a good job. Do a real good job. But, uh, alright, so uh, we've got her now, and uh, I'm gonna go uh, recruit Strago next. Here's Lakshmi, so, you know, we've basically got everything other than the Kiraga spell. Uh, I don't... You know, the funny thing is, you know, when you build magic on... <laughs> well, I guess I, I basically have built magic on everybody. Uh, but when you build your magic, uh, you know, on so many characters, or you get it so high, the Kiraga spell actually is kind of overkill. And, uh, you know, a simple, or the, the tier 2 spell actually can really get the job done. Um, so, you know, not uh, not actually a real high priority to, to learn that, honestly. But, uh, alright, yeah, we're getting there. What do we need? Three? We've got three characters left? Is that right? Cyan? Gao? Strago? Is that right? Man, we're getting there. Holy crap. Okay, well... Yeah, I guess I guess you know getting realm is kind of like a two for one because you know Strago is right here. So uh, just as soon as you get her, you can go grab him. Stubborn old bag of bones, snap out of it! Realm, realm, is it really you, dear? Oh, okay, so they they lost each other, I guess. I think I was going to check out before you, you old geese bag. That's a very strange way to, to speak with your grandfather, but all right. Foul mouth as ever. And Strago has got a new lease on life. Boy, yeah, the Strago has is really th apparently really thriving in the uh, the world of Ruin. Joined himself a fancy cult, uh, you know, feeling energetic, like more energetic than I've ever seen him. You know. Kind of impressive, but also kind of creepy. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see here. What's next? I think uh, it's looking like... What is that looking like? Actually, this looks like more... This looks like more like Jidor footage. Weird. We'll see. But yeah, all right, two left. Uh, again, uh, Cyan and Gal. It's, it's always, uh, you know, really funny now, too, because the... The first times that I played the game, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I, I really liked Cyan. And um, 
I kind of, uh, I kind of lost, uh, <laughs> I said, don't want to say lost respect for him, but like, I just, uh, I tend to focus on other characters more now. And, uh, uh, so, you know, previously, or like, you know, again, the, the first couple times I played through the game, I would always get Cyan pretty much right away. And part, partly because they kind of hint at, you know, going to grab him, uh, as soon as you get the airship, you see the, uh, the pigeon flying towards Miranda. Oh, that's why I went to the wrong place. Okay. Is that what happened here? Or did I go in? Okay, I did go in. Yeah, I'm not sure why I'm here. Oh, let's find out. Weird. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> it looked looked like maybe I was going to go towards the, uh, the auction hall, but uh, we already got everything. So... Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I considered putting the cactar on the, the velt right now, which I think actually is a good idea. Uh, and honestly, I should have done it a, a long time ago, actually. Uh, because I think that when you're farming the velt, you know, specifically for like the, the undead behemoth guy and uh, holy dragon. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't know. There's, there's probably some other stuff. That, yeah, the, uh, the Celestriad. Or I should say cycling the belt, you know, um, which I did a couple of times again because I got like I think I, I did I did farm up like four Celestriads. So, anyways, uh, I think it's a good idea to add you know really specific monsters uh, because you know our belt pack uh, our packs are still mostly empty for the world of ruin, and so you know f it, it just really helps to keep it you know kind of compact for. You know, farming those specific items, and then once you've uh, farmed them, you know, then you're good to go, and you can add whatever else that you that you really want. And uh, but but that said, I still think that the cactar is actually really really useful to uh, put in there early on. Um, I usually use uh, you know Ragnarok to to take him down because uh, you know you can morph him, and he morphs into the imp gear, uh, you know, just like the uh, the tonberries do. But um, you know, he's worth a ton of AP. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, well, actually, yeah, a big chunk of change as well. So, you know, I don't know. I think it's a good, a good, uh, or a good monster to add uh, early on for that, uh, for that reason. So, so yeah, so, so that's why I do that. But uh, all right, anyways, yeah, we see the uh, the return pigeon, I guess, right? Uh, it's flying towards Zozo. So uh, that is the the next stop, and. Uh, yeah, so we'll go we'll go pick up Cyan. Uh, again, you know, before you before you come here, and you know, I I kind of did a, a specific well, not a, I guess not a specific video, but I I definitely did have footage earlier on there of getting the thunder shields. Uh, I, I think that those are very important for the storm dragon. It makes that fight uh, significantly easier. Um, it'll nullify the you know the wind damage, which is pretty slick uh here i'm actually grabbing the the treasure chest that i didn't pick up uh the first time through here uh if if you remember which you probably don't <laughs> but uh my earlier trips through zozo i i got into very specific you know encounters out here uh it was the hill gigas on the streets and then it was any of the veil dancers on the inside uh, that were accompanied by either the two harvesters or the three gabaldegex. So that is still literally the only uh, formations that I've added to the Velt uh, regarding those three. Uh, actually, regarding all of the, the the basic areas of Zozo here. And uh, and so, anyways, so when I first came through, I skipped these chests because I didn't want to. You know, I mean, they're they're kind of pointless, right? The the, the rewards are what was that an ether and a potion? You know, so not really worth walking. And, and potentially get into, getting into extra uh, battles. So I passed up on those. Uh, there was the Ice Shield. Those are pretty good. Uh, the Red Cap also. Red Cap I really like. Uh, that gives you a bonus to, I think it's like a 25% bonus to your HP. Uh, and then some stats as well. Uh, th the three Agility I really like. Um, so I usually put those on Gogo and Locke. Um, you know, really to, uh, for one thing, to... To get them, you know, actions more often because, you know, in battles, uh, because I do so much stealing, 
and so much failing at stealing. Uh, I would rather have those guys get, you know, a lot of uh, turns. And so I think it makes sense to put those on them. Uh, there's one of the Thunder Shields. Uh, and again, that's also why I recommended, you know, farming, you know, two Thunder Shields earlier. Because uh, we can get the uh, the one here as well as uh, we've got the Paladin Shield, which is, you know, like a an amazing version of, <laughs> of that. Uh, here I took a little, uh, I took off the, the Moogle charm just to show you guys a monster here that I had brought up in, you know, one of the earlier videos. So this is the Glazia Labolus. And uh, this guy, you can rarely steal a muscle belt from him. I don't really like that item, but uh, I actually, or I at least wanted to uh, throw that in here. And um, I originally had brought it up in relation to the Crystal Orb which is, you know, a, a rare steal from the Magimaster. I, I think it's it's garbage. It's a garbage relic. But uh, I at least wanted to, you know, let you guys know that there's other ways of, of getting it. So, um, anyways, that is all the time I've got for this one. As always, hope the guide was helpful and hope you join me for more videos. Thanks for watching.